anatomy. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. older films too from the eighties. Oh yes. I also remember him from uh, Outbreak when he uh, played the uh, punk hit, the punk guy who uh, brought the uh, infected monkey. Yep. Yep. And oh, most recently he was in another horror film, uh, Thanksgiving. Oh yes, of course. Yep. So, hey, Le Leon, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining. Hey, Thomas. Oh yeah, like there's gonna be other people uh, joining us uh, shortly. You now they uh, Nick, Nick's gonna Nick's had his a uh, week his monthly meeting, so he's gonna be. Uh, joining us later on and and so for, for now it's just uh, me and jill so we're covering uh scream three and yeah screen uh, scream three it's uh yeah it's continued takes place a uh, year after the events of the uh, second movie and uh it's uh this film was actually released uh three years in uh, after scream two so the year uh, 2000 yeah and also on the same year with released the parody of the scream movies uh scary movie of yeah. the parody of the scream movies yeah so mm -hmm. yeah those are so funny yeah I, I i did enjoy those yeah i uh yeah i just got on like uh this recently <laughs> <laughs> nice one one day we're gonna have to cover that as well yeah definitely yes oh hey billy thanks so much for uh tuning in hey chris good to see you wow we got a lot of people here now <laughs> maybe not many people be maybe sure there's not many people on the screen but uh you know a lot of audience so i'd like to see that They'll be on soon. Oh, yeah. Yes, they will. They will. And, of course, I had to start this off with my ghost face outfit. Oh, look. Hey, guys. Hey. Sorry I'm late. We actually ended up going to the uh, passages me, but we, we ended up leaving early before because now it's starting to rain like crazy outside. Yeah. Um, just just a dark and stormy night in the Chicago land. Wow. It was, actually, it was actually starting to get kind of scary because they actually were talking about possible tornadoes. But as, as of right now, there's no watches or warnings or anything like that, so it might just it might just happen uh, later at night. So we'll just yeah, have to see what goes on. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, here, hey Charles, oh, oh, this, Charles. oh here's oh this is he's new. Hey, um, oh hey, I gotta I, say, love Texas, great state. I haven't been there in a while, but uh, yeah, I got to I got been to Galveston, I've been to Houston, experienced all kinds of great things there. So mm -hmm. hey, it's good good to see, you. good to have you on here. I I actually know Charles. He's he's been uh he's watched some of our other podcasts on this network. Oh, has he? Nice. He's a regular. It's, oh, hey, Santi, good to see you. Nick, you're you're a different uh, location. Yeah, he's he's at his place. Yeah. I'm at mine. So Basically. well, not only not only that. Well, not I, I know what he's trying to say. No, not necessarily. I'm in a different location. I'm just in another part of the basement because, like I said a week or so ago, we had a lake a leak in my area where I normally sit. Which since that was been since it's now finally dried up but unfortunately we still got it we still got to clean up that area so I see. Uh, until then i gotta be in this area or in my upstairs office gotcha uh, yep so, that right please guy nice Pickle oh, hey, hey, Tom. sorry not on tonight been keeping an eye on oh okay well uh hey do what you have to do for your dad i totally understand man so play that game oh my god joe to play that game last night did you guys see that live we did last night? Did you guys watch that? What did you do? Oh, it was, it was so much fun. It was it's so damn funny. Uh, Tom, myself, and Joe, we all did a, uh, a, a gameplay together. Yes, oh. we were playing golf it on Steam. Nice. And man, I got to be honest, I haven't played a golf an online golf game for quite a long time, but it was yeah. so much fun. Don, I know you got a Steam account. You got to get golfing and play with us one of these days. I'll Joe, consider. you should do the same too. Maybe uh, it's, only, it's only nine bucks. It's not that, not that uh, expensive at all. Okay. Uh, but Tom well, said he got in trouble for being too loud. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Right. So, Nick, tonight we're covering uh, Scream Three, which was the supposed to be the last film of the Scream movies until eleven years later. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, this is actually the first time where um, Courtney Cox and David Arquette appeared, like we're in the movie when they were married in real life. Yeah, you know, like That's uh, right. yes, it's it's pretty awesome that they were actually like a couple in the movie and then a couple in real life. But then, and and like it's just like after the end of their relationship, it, like they pointed out, they made it like incredibly meta in the fifth Scream movie when their characters were divorced in the film. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like like Scream. Yeah, that's the thing. Scream just gets more and more meta with each film. Like even mm -hmm. in this one, it does. It says like where there's a movie within a movie. You know, the Stab franchise, which. uh 
depicts the events of the screen movies. I know, could not get more meta than that. Movie within a movie thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And here they're working on Stab 3, the final film of the Stab trilogy. <laughs> Santi, uh, I didn't get a, I, I didn't get a haircut. I just have it combed out. It's pretty much the same. He said, mm -hmm. I, I got a new haircut. I haven't gotten any. Nah. Like comedy, um, like the man of comedy, Bob Saget. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what he's talking about, but okay then. <laughs> yeah, God, God rest his soul. Yeah. God, it's like the Romero trilogy. We thought the third film was going to be the last one, but then there's another sequel years later. Yep, that is true. It's Rambo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Rambo trilogy. Oh, yeah. Rambo yeah, it's, it's Rambo trilogy. Oh, yeah. Well, Romero too. <laughs> when you think about the Dawn of the De Dead, like Night of Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead. Land of the that was a trilogy. That was a trilogy until years later when they made another one. So, <sighs> yeah. Sorry, guys. I got. I'm just, unfortunately I'm starting to suffer my allergies. So. Oh, he's infected I, with the T virus again. <laughs> this is a torture period for me. I I uh, hate it. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. And once again, in this in Scream Three, we have an opening where uh, where where there's a shocking attack by Ghostface. Like in the fir first film, it's where he was targeting. Uh, Casey and her boyfriend. Yeah, you know, Casey was played by Drew Barrymore. The second film, it was like offing uh, Will Smith's wife in the, in the movie theater. And now here is where he kills off a uh, frequent character of the series, uh, Cotton. And yeah, like who apparently like in the beginning of this uh, film, he was like, a, he became a controversial talk show host after he was just like basically living off of the fame he got from being wrongfully accused of, of murder. Yeah, he didn't yeah. seem like a really great guy in it. <laughs> yeah, leave Schreiber. Yeah, let's see, um, it, guys. I might, I won't be gone long, but I'm actually talking with Jeremy quickly. Apparently, I've been logged out from Streamyard, so I'm going to try to get the password. So if I, I do go out, if I, I do go out, I'm only just going to be gone for maybe a minute or so. It, it's kind of weird. Streamyard's been logging people out of the accounts. Yeah, I had that same issue. Mm. It, it seems like it primarily happens when the. Uh, when 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 the computer's off or something like that. What's up, Nikki? Hey, Nikki. Nikki, what's up? Yeah, I wonder if she's going to be able to. If she's able to join us. I mean, she's still in the uh, in our group chat, so she's she still she's the link. She was. Uh, I don't know if you saw. She said for the last two weeks or so that she was on holiday with her daughter because her daughter was off of school. So mm -hmm. um, that that's why she had hasn't been on for these last few weeks. Oh. Hey, Sus Gaming. Good to see you. Yeah, I, I know who this is. Uh, this is, um, yeah, just for uh, context, uh, Jill. Yeah, I recently spoke to uh, my, went back to my grade school and spoke to my, with uh, some classes from my, one of my former teachers uh, about autism because it's awareness month. You know, so. Yeah, so. Right. And I believe, if I remember correctly, I believe this is one of those kids. Nice. Kate, Kate wears, uh, I, I heard from Kate that she often wears blue to represent autism awareness. So, oh yeah, yeah. Blue is is the autism awareness color. I've seen people uh, like dye their hair blue for that. This is actually, um, I mean, it may look black on camera, but it's actually a very dark blue color. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, he said, hey, "Yep." Hey, hey, Sauce Gaming. Here, look what I got for adjusted for this. <laughs> <laughs> Cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to, you know. Yes. Uh, we. Oh yeah, see, she just I just saw it from Nikki. Uh she can't make it. She's still her daughter's still home. Oh, I, I got you. I totally understand. Daughter. Yeah, Nikki Nikki, oh, yeah, she's in a different time zone all the way in Australia. So I'm wondering what time it is there. Mm -hmm. It's uh probably about sometime in the morning. I think about yeah. ten or eleven o'clock. Gotcha. I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. She and said she just said hopefully next week she'll join back. Right. And so yeah, this film hold, oh hold on, Billy's uh got some, something here. Oh wait, hang on. What do you say? My little one doesn't find that affair is funny at all. What did you think of her? Um, I thought her character, like she was—I mean, she was playing a dumb character in scary movie. Yeah, but that's what he's referring to. Because mm -hmm. the, same, the same year when uh, in two thousand when Scream three when Scream three was released is when the scary movie franchise started. Yeah, the parody of Scream, which then started parodying other horror films as the series went on. I remember those years. <laughs> Yeah, us millennials remember that in those days really well. Yeah, uh, let's see. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. This film also has uh, serves as an early role for uh, Jenny McCarthy, who I believe her son also has autism. Hmm. 
Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yes. I've seen uh, her do like do like go on talk shows about it. Yeah. And let's see, the year two thousand. I wonder if she was still J- if she what she had yet to date Jim Carrey at the time. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think she was like. And it's like, hey, say what you want about Scream 3, but I still consider this a better movie than what she was in previously, the same year. This uh, She was in this really bad movie called Python about a giant... Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of mm-hmm. Python. About a giant 60-foot snake, and uh, I saw I, I had a curiosity. I went back to that film, and I saw saw like where, where her what her character was, and she was like a dumb... She, she played a really dumb character in this, who ended up getting decapitated by the python's tail, like swish, and <laughs> it was so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds insane. Yeah. Oh, here. Sauce Gaming is asking, I know this is off topic, but didn't someone who had autism make Pokemon? Yes. Satoshi Tajiri. Yep. He uh, he started it because he wanted to create a video game based on his um, his hobby that he did, collecting bugs, which was, uh, auto- which der- was derived from his autism. We always had these compulsive things. Collecting things, like, as you see here. <laughs> But uh, yeah, for me it was film. For him, it was bugs. And he was like, "I need to make a video game out of this." And that's what the and the game ended up showing us that the compulsive side of autism. We want to collect things, and the mm-hmm. slogan "Got to catch them all." Yeah. <laughs> yes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, well, you, there's really a lot to it when you think about it. Anyway, Chris was saying like Anaconda. Oh yeah, but Anaconda was better than Python. <laughs> Way better. Yeah. <laughs> Way better. At least, at least Anaconda had good practical effects. I mean, with uh, Python, I believe, yeah, like 90% of it was CGI. It was stupid. Yep. Yeah. She could her son of autism not sign, but is there a cure? No, there is not, but uh, there is uh, ways that you could, like, help it, though. There are certain therapies like, that have been pro- been that ha- have been proven to help it over the years. Yes. But for the most part, it's, exper- it's all experimental. Right, right. Yes. Oh here. Sorry, I'm just I'm just sending a quick message to Jeremy because right now again I'm trying to get back into StreamYard right now. No worries, bro. And so Santi, I never really knew the last thing I remember was the new screen movie that came out a few years ago. Yeah, it was uh, two th- 2022. Mm-hmm. Jenna Ortega, and she was in the uh, Scream Six, which came out last year. Mm-hmm. Five and six. Don't forget Lake Placid. Yes, I remember Lake Placid. I remember, that was 1999. I remember seeing the poster for that when my parents took me out to see that Disney movie Tarzan. Yeah. But uh, anyway, back to uh, Scream 3. So the whole premise of this is Ghostface is back again, and he's uh, he's after uh, people who are on the set of uh, Stab 3, the final film of the in the movie within a movie, you know, the Stab franchise, and is luring, luring Sydney, Sydney back again to uh, face him. And yeah, like there, this uh, movie literally plays into the trope of like a final film of a trilogy, like revealing something that you didn't uh, know, like a bet that you never knew. And it was kind of which formed like this connection to events from the first film. And this was demonstrated like Randy pointed this out when he was uh, made a brief appearance via VHS tape. And yeah, it was. Oh, hey, Dead Souls. Glad glad to see you. Yes, Dead Souls. Uh, She's uh, yeah, she's pretty cool. She's been on my video game live streams before. Hey, how many screen movies uh, are there? There are six as of right now. They're working on another one, and uh, I believe they got Nev Campbell uh, to come back to reprise uh, her role as Sydney. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for that. Yes, I'm just I'm just sad that there's not going to be Melissa Barrera or Jenna Ortega yeah. in it. I'm sad about that. Yeah. Better, I hear a rumor they're going to kill them off, and I'm hoping that's not true. They're going to upset a lot of people, a lot of people. But uh, and also this uh, tackles. Um, let's. Uh, Let's see. What was I gonna say? The, like the, the whole idea of uh, the killer being uh, stronger than ever, but that's only because he was wearing a bulletproof vest this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like just, this one was like smarter than the ones before it. And huh, man, and I, I think it was very fitting that this uh, took place in Hollywood, where like all the magic happens in like uh, creating movies. But also, this um, this also addresses the dark side of Hollywood, where uh, Edler, where there were an actor, new upcoming, you know, like. Actor, actors and actresses who uh, end up getting taken advantage of by the industry. And mm-hmm. uh, one of the biggest... Sad, sad part of about it. Yes, which is pretty crazy because one of the producers of this... Or like one of the producers of the... Of the the network that this is with, uh, Dimension, Dimension Studios. Yeah, Harvey Weinstein is one of the biggest offenders of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, I'll be back in just a sec. I 
<laughs> Jeremy got me logged in, so I'll be back okay. in just a minute. Okay, good. I mean, it's like you think about all the great work that has been made possible from that monster, and like no, and like, and she, for the people on a, on the public as a whole had no idea what he was doing with these actresses, and I'm just like. If I'm like, if even half of what these people are saying is true, then he needs to be held accountable for what he's done. Definitely. Like I remember, I remember reading the news reports about it, just being sickened. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, here, uh, Dead Souls is saying, Roman and with glasses and Roman without the glasses are two different people. <laughs> 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 it's like they kind of did look different. He kind of looked like different without the glasses, like yeah, you know, like Clark Kent, where he takes yeah. off the glasses like Superman. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what they're trying to. Yeah, make it's an example. Welcome back. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> kind of surprising that the green screen showed up uh, behind me. I didn't even have it activated. Yeah. There's a cameo by uh, status. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's true. There is a cameo by Jay and Silent Bob in this movie because it's Miramax. That's true. And you know who was also cameoed in this film? One of the biggest uh, horror producers of all time. Uh, trying to. Th oh, wait. Is it. um? Oh, man, it's like right in front of me. Wait, is it Lance Henriksen? Well, he's one of them, but he's not. I, was, I said producer, not actor. Producer. Okay, I was gonna say I remember Lance Henriksen. Yeah, he plays uh, the, the crooked producer in this film. Yes. Yeah. But started a, a lot of horror films. There's a real, real producer in that was played a cameo in this who was big in the horror industry, including B horror. Come on, Nick, you got this. It's it's been so many years since I've seen Scream Three. Um, Wes Craven, right? uh, well, Wes Craven was directed this. Yeah, yes. yeah I was going to say he directed it. Okay, you want to know, Nick? Just, just go ahead. It's been such a long time since I've seen Scream Three. Roger Corman. Oh, Roger Corman. Okay. Yep. A lot of uh, great, uh, a lot of B uh, B horror stuff was made possible, including Little Shop of Horrors. Because yeah, you know, because of him, he came up with the idea of Little Shop of Horrors, like on a bet that he could create something like that within a day or within a day or two. He but also then, made uh, a lot of the. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe movies, with yes. eight of them to be total, with all but one of them having Vincent Price in them. Yep, and he also produced uh, one of my favorite uh, my favorite Jaws ripoff, Piranha. Which he also, also, yes, which we also covered on the podcast earlier. He also supposedly said that although he never worked on it, he said he did receive the script, and he I think he was originally supposed to help out making the movie uh, The Silence of the Lambs in the early nineties. Mm -hmm. Because they often say that's a movie that he should have made himself because it was just so good. And it's even more surprising that uh, Roger Corbin's still alive today. Yes. Nine, he's like 97 he's his, years old. I was about to say, he's in his 90s. He's got to be. You know, it's I, I just got to throw this out real quick since we're talking about him. It's funny how <clears throat> the movies that he made, I'm getting messages he had all these different historic actors. You know, he had... <laughs> He had Vincent Price. He had Peter Lorre. He even had at times um, um, Jack Nicholson. Yep. All Jack of these. Barbara Steele. Well, yes. except for her, all of these people are now long gone. And these guys had had movie careers, some of which some dating back to the 1920s. Right. All those guys are gone now. But yeah, Roger Corman is still alive today. Oh, wait, Ray Moland. He also did Man with X Ray Eyes. Yep. You know, he's worked and, with all these people who are gone. He's still, Roger's still alive today. Yep. And uh, I did mention before about uh, Little Shop of Horrors. You mentioned Jack Nicholson. Well, the original Little Shop of Horrors from 1960 was Jack Nicholson's very first movie when he was in his early 20s. Oh, really? I didn't it's know true. that. It's true. I've seen the earliest movie I've seen with Jack Nicholson. It wasn't a horror movie, but it was still something of an interest. And he was in his he was in his late 20s in this case was when he was in that uh Hell's Angels movie back in the 60s. Right. That's true. He did do the original Death Race, Death Race 2000. Yes, that's right. I scream. Oh, hey, Nightman. Good to see you. Um, let's see. I'm trying to catch up here. Yes, that is true. Princess Leia was in, uh, in, in Screen 3. Uh, yeah, you mentioned this, and also so did Billy. Yes, there was a scene where... Uh, where oh. Sid oh, here. Oh, look who's joining us. Hey, Irene. Hey. Hi. Hi. Guess what? Our podcast went really weird sideways. We were talking about haunted. Oh, I was talking to the guest about the places that he goes to that could he could bring back unwanted guests, and oh. all of a sudden a sound went out. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Oh. And then it it got really creepy. 
And then it's just like sometimes when I talk about certain things, right, for him to be careful, and he had a hitchhiker on him, and I got rid of the hitchhiker, and then everything went sideways afterwards. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And you know what? That happens to me a lot of times. I, got, I get kicked out of my own podcast every so often, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I got kicked out the other day, too, of my own podcast, right? Jeez. When he, when we had Eric on, and then I got kicked out of the ring because I was talking about certain videos that should not be posted there about in Japan, and then I got kicked out the last minute. Man. Oh my god! Jeez. And then today we were talking about him being careful about where he goes, uh, paranormal investigating, and then poof, his son went. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Man, that's insane. That is. And you know what? I know what well, I know what I do, and I know what spirits can see what I do, right? I know some of them are scared of what I can do because I can get rid of them, right? Mm -hmm. And I can get rid of the dark ones too, but they don't like me very much, okay? And uh they're scared of me actually. Hmm. And so they'll try to get rid of me. Or get rid of or stop the guests from talking. Oh wow. Man. And it's 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 just something that I'm so used to, right? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but you know, that's my job. That's what I do. That's my job. Of course, yeah. Oh here, uh yeah, that's right. Oh, that, that's also uh, then Princess Leia. Oh, yeah, they, they just did that as a joke, you know. Like that actually mm -hmm. was yeah, that uh so there was a scene where where you know, Gail and her, uh, the actress that was meant to play her in uh, Stamp 3, was uh, they were going to the archives to figure out uh, why there were still like publicity still shots of uh, Sydney's mother, uh, Maureen Prescott. And they, they ended up going to the archives, and the person in charge of that was uh, none other than Carrie Fisher. And there was this, jo there was this joke that uh, she didn't get to play the part of uh, Princess uh, Leia, it just went to some other actress. But and I'm just like, what are you talking about? You are Princess Leia. <laughs> yeah. Said the the likeness is uncanny. Yep. <laughs> oh man. And there was that that scene also tackled the whole uh, thing about uh, people using stage names instead of their real names. I mean, some. So I mean, some people do that. I mean, Natalie Portman, her real last name is in Portman. What's her real? Well, name? I just found out John Legend isn't John Legend. It's like John Stevens. <laughs> Yeah. Oh really? That on the voice. <laughs> right. Oh really? Yeah. Yep. Let's see. Let me look at look, look at her uh, real name. Let's see. Oh yeah, here it is. Natalie Herschlag. Oh, okay. No wonder she changed it. It's hard yeah, to she, say. Her Herschlag? I don't. Maybe. Maybe it's. It might Israel. be hard to say. Maybe. Maybe it's a uh, Jew. Oh, she's she was born in Jerusalem, so I guess maybe it's a Jewish name. Yeah. Know. Yeah, but. Uh, it's a yeah, religious it's, name, probably. Yeah. It's like when they change Marilyn yeah. Monroe's name. They just Very wanted much. to give them a stage name instead. And something that's, that's like yeah. nice. You know, hard, I, feel, I feel the exact same way. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen Screen 3 in years. You know, I'm just going to throw this out because there's actually a very good reason why I think I haven't seen it in such a long time. And Don, you would probably remember this too. I do remember that AMC, when they had their Fear Fest or when they had Fear Fridays, Right. They often would show those movies on a regular basis, but every time now when AMC Fear Fest comes around like the Halloween season, I don't know. There are certain movies they just don't show anymore on Fear Fest anymore. Like they they might show like the first screen film, but they don't show the sequels. But there's other various other movies that they haven't shown in years, at least almost twenty. I, I just remember that. AMC used to show a lot more of these movies probably back in the early 2000s than now. They did. But they don't have Fear Fridays anymore. And yeah, they're just they're just only showing limit, like just relatively limited films. I mean, whether or not it's because they don't have they do or don't have the rights to show it, or they'd rather show these other movies, I, I don't know. But for some reason they haven't that's that's one of the reasons why I haven't seen them for so long. Yeah. Oh here. I heard the girl playing Sydney instead. Was supposed to be the, one of the killers, but the script got leaked, so they changed. Oh, yeah, I did hear mm -hmm. about that. I hear, I heard that uh, like the the script the script got leaked somehow. Mm. Yeah. 
I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to get some water just to help out with my allergies. Yeah. Hey, Dan, Nick, do what I do. Have a drink beforehand. <laughs> I, again, I, I got home so quick that I didn't even think about it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that's just one of the, the issues that was with this film. Uh, I do remember there was this music video they reacted to a while back uh, on my channel called uh, What If by Creed, where they, yeah, they actually promoted the, the Scream 3 with that music video. Yeah, David Arquette was in the music video. Mm. Yeah, I reacted to this, and this was like a few years ago, like like I think, I think four or five years ago. Oh, my back. Yeah, let's see. Imagination runs wild in the backgrounds, yeah. Well, Denzel's, I think maybe this was a blessing in disguise for this film because, like, having Roman being the standalone killer, like, that's like, this is the only film where it was just, where it was just one person instead of having, being, having a partner. It was just one killer. Yeah, I kept doubting, though, like, the detective uh, played by Patrick Dempsey. Yeah. I kept thinking like he's so iffy in it because of the way he would stare at Sydney and just give that, that vibe of yes. killer. Yeah, I, I hear you. And yeah, he kind of did have that vibe. And he's very knowledgeable about movies. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it kind of gave you made you think. But it's like, but near the end when he ended up like, like a, he ended up defending sis and he went, uh, that the real ghost face jumped out, lunged at her, and he jumped in the way. You know, like he mm -hmm. took a he took a stab before he her. Did. Yeah. Yes. And uh, let's see, we need to see Stu's sister soon. Oh yeah, like there was a. Oh wait, oh wait, Stu, you mean the killer from the first? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that that would be interesting to have her as a killer in uh, in an upcoming film. Yeah, like <laughs> just waited all this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I remember Vampire from Crypt TV. I reacted to that. I think the last movie I saw with David Arquette was Eight Legged Freaks. So yeah, I know he hasn't really done. Yeah, you know, like the Scream franchise is one of the is the, like the biggest role that he's known for. But uh, Dewey. yeah, Dewey, Dewey Riley, and yeah, like it feels like his character. Like I said, his character and and Gale, they just get more and more meta with each film. It's mm -hmm. like yeah, like. They, they fell in love in the first movie, both in character and in real life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, dated in the next, and while they were working in the next movie, and then were married in the third film. And it shows at the ending, the ending of Scream Three, where uh, Dewey ends up proposing to Gale in a pretty, pretty a unique way. I gotta say, <laughs> yeah, proposing ends up proposing to her by he trying to get her to sign her book of uh, the Woodsboro Murders, which depicted the events of the first movie. And the, oh, she opened it up. There was an engagement ring on the inside, and inside of a hole cut out. So I yeah. thought that was, I thought that was clever. That was cute. Yeah. What if Stu had survived the TV crush? Uh, unlikely. <laughs> I was gonna say that's uh, that'd be quite a miracle to survive, but I don't think you would. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure uh, Stu had died from that. Like that's that's the theory that's been going around about uh, Stu. Sir, the Stu is still alive, and he's out there somewhere. I'm like. Uh, how did they lose track of his body then? Yeah. <laughs> how did they lose track of him? <laughs> that makes no sense. Uh, body snatch just took it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Roman has no family to come back to besides Sid. Yes, that's the tw the twist of Screen 3 is that not only was the killer Roman, Roman the director of, of uh, the movie within the movie, Stab 3, but also he is the illegitimate son of uh, Maureen Prescott, Sydney's mother. So Sydney and him are half-siblings. Mm -hmm. and and he ended up being the cause of the events from the first two movies because he had uh, shown that that, that Marine Prescott was uh, having an affair with uh, with Billy's uh, father, Billy the Killer from the first movie, motivated mm -hmm. him to kill her and then then go on a killing spree with uh, Stu. And you know, Stu was basically just along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a that, thrill, that's, kill, thrill killing if I would put it. Pretty much. So mm -hmm. that's what that's what uh that, that's what what, uh, what what Randy. That's what Randy meant when he said that there was going to be something that you thought was true, but like well, you're about to find out something that's going to change everything you know about the past few movies. And this <laughs> was it. It makes you wonder who like his biological father was, because we know the mm. mother was okay, like not a killer. But what if his father was like a killer or something? Mm. Well, we know that he, he's illegit, like he, he was like illegitimately born for, from. Um, Marine Prescott being taken advantage of by producers. It's also mm -hmm. theorized that uh, Lance Henris's character was the father. 
Mm, okay. That scumbag yeah. producer? Yeah. It's implied that it was him. Yeah. I hate when people say that Stu and Billy started the murders because they literally didn't Roman. Yeah, Roman motivated them to go on the killing spree, but uh, they did kill the, they did commit the first killings. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to hang on. It's got to go to Chris's comment here. Father, Father was my Myers. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, uh, Freddie. Imagine right now, Don, if we had like our, our friend Mike Myers on right now and he saw that. <laughs> 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 yeah, it is true. I, I Joe and I read if you guys we actually do have a friend of ours named Mike yeah. Myers. He's part of the Things of Illinois crew. So yeah. that, that'd be hilarious. Famous. It's like, true. Mike, it was you. <laughs> it was him all along. I knew it. <laughs> man. <laughs> oh man. But uh yeah, like it also there there was like there was a few scenes that I love that I enjoyed making fun of. Like uh there there was a scene where uh, Jenny McCarthy's character Sarah, she was playing a, like uh, actress for Stamp Three, the movie. Yeah, like again, movie within a movie. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I have to keep reminding, otherwise people are going to get confused. By that. <laughs> Stab. Yes. Oh my and... god, Dead Souls. I actually have a kid named Michael Myers in my math class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's awesome. I am... Nice. I don't know if and... Mike, the the Mike we know is watching. You, t there's something going on that you're not telling us. Like I think I like, I think I went to school with someone with that name too. Like I father, like son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was he? Wow, nice. Hmm. Wow, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was saying uh, that uh, the one one of the scenes I like making fun of was by Jenny McCarthy, like where she's trying to like read. Yeah, you know, her character Sarah is trying to read like from the script, like because she thinks that Roman's on the you know like Roman's talking to her on the phone about the script. And she's like, why am I showering? Showering's overdone. Ver Vertigo, hello. And I'm just like, uh, no, you're thinking of Psycho. You know, like uh, both, both of them are Hitchcock uh, movies, but uh, there mm. are no shower scenes in Vertigo, just Psycho. And Yeah, she got it wrong. I, of all people, would know. <laughs> yep. You're trying to tell us something? <laughs> Hitchcock. Nick? Yep. Has nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> he's your name, Jack Frost. What? Seriously? Huh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Do you have Scream Three on uh, DVD? Uh, no, but I do have it in uh, 4K, like digital. Mm. I used to have it on DVD years ago, but uh, but when my TV uh, over there when uh, got a 4K screen, it doesn't really uh, process DVD. Like it, the quality is just poor on it. So mm. I so that's why I ended up. Replacing everything with uh, D with Blu-ray or 4K like this. Mm. Yep. So, yeah, I traded in my software and franchise really recently for this on Blu-ray. So, yep, everything's getting replaced for higher quality. Mm-hmm. Is uh, Nick? Oh, he oh he's muted. Mm. He's yeah talking to someone. Yeah, Don, do you have all six movies in Blu-ray or 4K? Uh, no. I uh, don't. I felt like there was, there wasn't really much uh, need for me to get it on Blu-ray because I have it on the stream services. Uh, you could actually watch uh, all the Scream movies on stream. Uh, one, Screams one through four are on uh, HBO Max, and five and six are on Paramount Plus. Mm. Yes, I don't have that here. I have all this. Oh, do you, Dead Souls? Nice. Tell Nick the storms are a starting. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Yep. My TV is totally different here. Yeah, there's definitely hail coming down. You have hail? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it's on Shutter. I mean, you would think like Shutter would have more. I think Shutter, like for the most part, Shutter puts on there like more independent, uh, more independent horror horror, horror films and uh, TV shows. Just a second, I gotta wash my hands. I say my Peter Burger sandwich for this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, Nick's still muted. Let's see. There is a new Scream movie that just came out somewhat recently, was there? Yes, last year was Scream 6, which uh, arguably one of the best sequels. I will say that. Mm -hmm. I liked I like, it. I really enjoyed it. I just love how it does this. Like, it does have something pretty unique to connect all the previous movies. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it for those who don't. We'll, um, we're going to get to that movie eventually. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we will be covering Scream 4, 5, and 6 uh, somewhat down the road. Ooh, I have to watch that. 
Yes. Speaking of Shutter, what did you think of Late Night with the Devil? Yes, I want to see that because they're actually showing that not just on Shutter, but also on uh, in movie theaters around here. But you know, since I have Shutter, I might as well watch it here. But uh, yeah, yeah, I am interested in it. I've heard I heard some good things about it, so I want to jump right in. Oh, yes. I, there's one horror film that I saw in theaters uh, this past weekend. I saw this movie called Sting, which uh, yep. is about a giant uh, killer spider. Mm. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a story of a girl and her spider. Who ends up becoming a giant man eater? Yeah, and it's... I'm, I already I already know about this. The yes. storms are starting. Yes. Okay. Here he's telling me that telling me that the storms are starting. Although haven't really had had it stormed not too long ago, but it's it's been going on and off. Right. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, Nick, I was just telling him about the the movie Sting, and yeah, Sting ended up being better than I thought it would be. It's uh, it is now my second favorite Killer Spider movie because. I was gonna say, what's your first? First would be this. Oh, mm. arachnophobia, of, of course. Mm. Childhood gem, right there. Mm. The girl or the spider? Which one becomes the man eater? Oh, uh, the spider. <laughs> the spider becomes the man eater using the ventilation system to get around. So it's taking a John John McClane approach. <laughs> Uh, no, guess, thank you. <laughs> I guess Thomas is the greatest fighters. Yeah, Thomas. Uh, don't, hey, no worries, Thomas. You're good. But uh, yeah, Sting, it's it's campy, but it's enjoyably campy. Mm. Yes. But uh, anyway, back so back to Scream 3. So let's see. What, what else did I wanted to mention on there? Um, oh, yeah. This uh, like I said, this movie this movie does expose that like tackle that issue about uh, Hollywood producers and uh, directors taking advantage of younger uh, you know like up and coming stars you know actors uh-huh. and actresses you know casting abuse like that uh-huh. and yeah that actually does happen in Hollywood more often than I would like like uh-huh. and we we've covered like we've talked about several people who are guilty of that such as uh, Victor Salva so that's the reason why we're not going to cover Jeepers Creepers movie on movies on here. Let's see. Oh. We just mentioned uh, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, I'm glad, oh. glad he's right where he belongs. And uh-huh. let's see. Oh yeah, Roman Polanski, who was uh, who fled the authorities, uh, like when at the when when the, he got found out. And yeah, so I, I welcome to come him to come back to us anytime. We have authorities who have a pair of handcuffs with his name on them. Oh. I don't think he's going to be coming back anytime soon, Don. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say, "Oh, like, but but the guy may, may, has made all kinds of great movies." I'm like, uh, dude, I don't care. If he makes, if he's put out a hundred blockbuster hits and has received EGOT status, Sharon Tate's husband Joe makes a good point. Yes, that's that's right. She yeah. was, she was, he was Sharon Tate's husband. Yes, that's right. And uh, in case for those of you who don't know what EGOT status, uh, that's for like if you win, it's a very very rare achievement. And that's you EGOT, EGOT status. It means you've won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony Award. Yeah, Tony oh. Awards. They're the uh, performance the, theatrical performance awards in America. So, and only a handful of people have gotten that status. Like, uh, let's see, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Mel Brooks, uh, Je- Jennifer Hudson. Uh, let's see, Audrey Hepburn. Oh, and uh, John Legend. He very recently received that status. I believe he's the first African American to uh, have that. Woody Allen. Uh, Woody Allen, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, you got status. Not easy to get. I mean, you look at all the major, all the major, a <laughs> pair major like names in hollywood like steven spielberg uh let's see uh chris chris, Col- chris columbus uh oh like let's see Le- leonardo dicaprio you know all the big directors and actors even none of them none of the big none of them have it you got status spielberg mm-hmm. doesn't have it like tarantino it's crazy how rare that is it, it is <clears throat> excuse me it's all right so, uh, what are your uh, favorite? If you remember uh, back to Screen Three, uh, what are your favorite moments uh, from the film? Wait, are you asking me or Joe or all, all of you? All of you. Favorite moments? It's usually the kills. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which I'm gonna go with that too. Okay, so which? Uh, what was your favorite kill of the movie? And uh, I'm not mm. just gonna ask you, not just you oh. guys, but also the audience too. I'm I do everybody. want to point out a part that's not a kill that I that like kind of pulled me in was the scene where she's having nightmares because of her like PTSD and her oh. mom comes to the window and haunts her and yeah. is like scratching at the window and just all scary. 
I remember that. <laughs> yes, that's true. Oh man. But uh I'm trying to remember what, what uh, there was like a death in that film that would have been a completely avoidable today with uh technology because there's this one character uh named uh, Tom who plays uh Stab Three's uh Dewey who uh ends up getting killed like when like, when he got stuck in the house when there was like gas buildup. He was like trying to read the note that they were mm -hmm. that the ghostface was faxing to him. Like said that there will be mercy to whoever smells the gas. That yeah. was the last word of there because he was holding a light. He was using a lighter to read it and he blew up. I and guess that would be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, that's that's avoidable with today's technology because we have flashlights on this and we have flashlights yeah. on this. Yeah. We got flashlights in almost just about everything. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, nobody really uses lighters as flashlights anymore to light the room. Yeah. Same. Uh, I mean, it was 2000. So, you know, right. like you I'm, still, I'm, your, your access to certain lights was still relatively limited. Yeah. How, how things have improved in 24 years. I mean, they're getting a, they're getting a message through fax. So that tells you something. <laughs> oh yeah. Fax machine. That's, oh, there you go. Yeah. Fax machines. That's another thing of the past, but um, mm -hmm. it's like, I do have a printer that actually does have a fax machine function, but uh, it's like, what's the point? Here's your answer. <laughs> one of them done. Oh yeah. With shooting Roman in the head. Final kill. Yes. Oh, yes. He had to be killed with a headshot. That's the other thing too. And I'm surprised you haven't brought this up, Don, about screen three. What's interesting about that one too, is that, this is really the true, the first true scream film where there was only one killer involved, unlike the previous two where there were duos. I, I did mention that you were away. Oh, I, did. I was I was on mute. I was talking. I had my mom was downstairs. I got you. Yeah. We, so yeah, this was pretty unique in that aspect where it was just uh, where the ghost face was just one man, not two, not, not like partners working together. But we did Although, say he was like a dual personality, kind of like Superman. In a, way. Yeah. In, a, in a way because you think about because they were commenting earlier i think uh well, who was it uh, dead souls was com yeah dead souls okay. was commenting earlier that uh that roman looks like a completely different person without the glasses you know kind of like a clark kent deal mm. yeah yeah so it's like he had an alter ego like an alter ego yeah but nonetheless i mean it's still it's still a it dealing with an, just one individual and like the two but then again when you look at the other two movies we always thought it was just one individual but in reality it was mm -hmm. actually two for mm -hmm. each yes yeah in the previous films we think that yeah and uh let's see another one of the let's see what was another uh death um oh here, here's, an, here's another death that would have been avoidable in just in general because there was like uh, that actress in the in the stab film uh what was her name and Angelina, she uh, she decided to just run off, desert the entire groove, and ended up running into Ghostface and getting stabbed in the neck. Mm. Yeah. That was that was completely avoidable. If she had just, it's like <laughs> I guess I guess she doesn't believe in the whole concept of strength in numbers. Mm. <laughs> Chris is like, I don't have an alter ego, but I do have a big ego. <laughs> oh man, you gotta love Chris. <laughs> Hey, Lauren. Lauren. Hey. How's, how's it going? Yes. So, and also, here, here's one thing that I find completely, <laughs> completely ridiculous about the movie. You know how Ghostface has, like, you know, he has a voice changer, you know, disguising his voice, you know, like making himself saying, yeah, you know, like sound like, you know, but yeah, uh, just like, yeah. But here's the thing in this movie, he has somehow got the ability to copy the voices of other people. To trick them into in certain situations, like uh, like the opening scene where you know it makes it sound like it's like uh, like when he's cotton calling cotton, he sounds like a, like some kind of a fangirl, but then that escalates and he switches to um, the to the usual ghost face voice. It's like mm -hmm. how does he how do you just one copy somebody else's voice and do it like that? I mean, back in those times, and like how would someone do that? He's good with computers. <laughs> but computers through, through a little hand through a little handheld device though. Yeah. Or maybe yeah, yeah. he could have been some, or maybe he could have somehow been possessed by the spirits of those killers. That would that, be one reason why that, his voice would change. Not no. <laughs> I'm just joking. well, they they said the technology in it was like he was cloning a phone number but to make no, it look well, like he was calling from them. Well, the cloning on disguise disguising a number is one thing, but but being able to somehow mm -hmm. get somebody's voice mm -hmm. like that's something else entirely. It's like. Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe there's a way with modern technology, but not in the year 2000. Maybe no. he, it's just like a voiceover when you, because he's like producing. I would think this just has to do with some kind of radio technology. Getting her a surprise gift. Oh, that's awesome, Warren. Nice. But somehow was able to get Maureen's voice, and she had been dead for years. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that I was thought that was weird. <laughs> yeah, that was the part that makes voice. Sense. Yeah. How would he know her voice? And how would oh. he? Yeah. I think I know. I think I know because she was in Hollywood and maybe he got like a copy of her in film or like auditioning and he just took her voice from that. Mm. I don't know. He was maybe he was just an impressionist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he would be a very imp impressive um, impersonation uh, skill. I mean, I mean, I, as everybody who's familiar with my channel, they know that I can do impressions like crazy, but yeah. uh, this is like something else entirely. Yeah. So I mean, with, order them, maybe. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, with me, it's always just fictional characters like uh, Pennywise, the dancing clown. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, of course, with Piggle Top, he could really mimic Rick and Morty. <laughs> Too yeah. bad he's not on tonight because he knows how to copy those voices. Yeah. Or I could just make everybody think I'm Donald J. Trump. Okay, running for president this year. Vote for me, please. Thank you. <laughs> I'm coming back in 2024 with a vengeance. <laughs> Ghostface impersonating. <laughs> Ghostface impersonating Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you wearing your tiny whiteies? <laughs> uh, oh I got creepy. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oh, I gotta uh, tell you, yeah. um, on an, on I think, I think three podcasts with me for everyone's gonna say no. Let's show up on our togas, right? <laughs> like, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh hell no, I'm saying, we're gonna do this. <laughs> it's true, Shadowheart. I've also man, man, and I going, yeah, okay, it, and. You know, uh, <laughs> Oh man, yeah, Shadowheart. I actually did do that impression like years. Excuse like, me. I did. I did that impression like years ago when I was playing Call of Duty online. And I in uh in yeah like when Donald Trump had was had just won the presidency. So I was just like going online making people think I was Donald Trump. So <laughs> I, whenever we won a match, I was just like, "There, we just won, okay." And it's all thanks to my leadership. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, like oh. you, you just you just got double killed by President Donald J. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, oh, and they're like, uh, "We don't." Well, I don't. He's like, one guy said, "I don't like you, Donald Trump," and I'm like, "Okay, clearly that guy works for CNN. Just ignore him." <laughs> fake news. Fake news. It's all fake news. <laughs> oh man. Oh okay. yeah. Favorite is the best best actor ever. Oh yeah. No, yeah, Nicholas Cage. Yeah, Nicholas uh, Cage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Recently, I played uh, Count Dracula. Uh, where Where's I was, Kate? Once again, I was a vampire. <laughs> yeah. Once again, I was a vampire. Kate would love that. Yeah. Oh, she's heard you know, all the time. There's only really one. If I'm just gonna say, with this election, I can already see Nicholas Cage going to Trump. Say, why didn't you put the money back in the box? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, but uh, oh, one thing I wanted to show you guys uh, because you know, like uh, one thing I wanted to show you, like you know how before we cut, we I showed you the uh, for what was it, Friends with No Faces by uh, Leatherface? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. We yeah. Well, oh, there is uh, several the, that YouTube channel, that YouTube channel, the Merkins. They've done plenty of uh, work which involves uh, Ghostface. Oh jeez, yeah. yeah. And one of them is like their most their most watched uh, video from there. I want to show you guys uh, this uh, while I'm thinking of it. Oh, this ought to be fun. Oh boy. I wish you could have had a larger crew for this, but you know, still it'll be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Here, um, you, like I'm sure all of you are familiar with the Backstreet Boys, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, this video. I know this one. <laughs> I know exactly which one this is. Okay. Oh, Chris knows yeah. who they are, too. Mergens are great. They're funny. Okay, well, here's my favorite uh, thing they did, in, in which Ghostface is, star is starring in it. 
Uh, here, I might as well show you. Here, get ready to laugh. <laughs> I remember this one. Okay, I'll post it up, but now there is. Yeah, yeah. I say you on fire with gas and a lighter. You scream when I say. I'll kill you that way, Sydney. My knife in the dark will reach to your heart. I'm ghost face, and I'll kill you that way. When you die, there ain't nothing but a dream stay. When you die, Nothing like a crystal lake Tell me why It's nothing but a singing I'll kill you that way I am My gold markers My one Piece of tire When I drove It's too late Hillbilly, enough of that backwards bullshit. Jason, Michael, bring it back, bitch. No matter the distance, I want you to know that I can guarantee. I say you on fire with gas and a lighter. I say, I say, I say. Just wanna kill you Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that, makes me, that makes me laugh every time. Every time. I I did a oh, I did a rush. I like the singing too. That was good too, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. <laughs> it's really great. It's yeah, as um Shadowheart pointed out, I find it ironic that Michael is actually probably the better singer of the group, but he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> like, like those who don't talk, like him and also uh, Jason. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so well, and uh, yeah, and also I love all the posters that they all had, and also the one that said "Call me Ghostface." I <laughs> like asking mm-hmm. him to call her. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that was hilarious. Want to ask if Rich? Oh, was so in a movie? Funny. I don't. I'm not sure. I don't think I saw mm-hmm. her in a uh, stream movie. I do remember her, and she's all that. Like my sisters had the uh, had a DVD oh of that when God. we were kids. All that. That movie. Yeah, was she, great. I think. Great. 
I think the girl that was in the like the acting for Stab, she kind of resembled her a little bit, but slightly. When she's a little bit. She looks like yeah. her a little, but it's not her. No, nah, yeah, no, no, it's not her at all. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and also one that other thing that felt so crazy to me was uh, where the scene where Sydney was, like was going on the set of Stab Three, which show which was like an exact replica of like the final act of the first uh, screen movie. Mm-hmm. And and well, it had to, it had to have been painful for her to be there, like actually, and like seeing reminders of of that night. Yeah, you know, like the like the doggy, the bloody uh, doggy door and the garage door. You know where her mm-hmm. her best friend Tatum had been killed in the first movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. going to her old bedroom, and but I will say this: I do like how they added that poster for Creed in her uh, in that bedroom. Oh, yeah, that's because, right. Yeah, yeah, because Creed music video. What if? That's why. Hmm. Ah, man. And then the killer ends up tracking her down there. And she, I like how she ended up outsmarting him by like uh, going up to a fake door. Like when she found what she realized was a fake door that led to like a huge drop. She like ended up hiding like a uh, inside of like a crevice. Like, like I, I mean, not mm-hmm. crevice. It's like it, it, it's like, like yeah, like so there's part that where you could stand on on the other side of it. And then she ended up when the killer got through that door, she ended up pulling him. Been throwing him down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's smart yeah. at least. Yeah, so that's what I like about Sydney. She's one of my favorite. That's why she's one of my favorite uh, final girls in uh, like f- female protagonists in uh, horror films because just how how wi- how quick quick she is to act. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like if I was in a life or death, life or death situation, I would want her by her on my team. Sorry, guys. I don't know if you know. <laughs> My eyes have been really itchy. This the allergies are just torturing me. I just really? took, I, I just took uh, some medication, so yeah. it's gonna take a while for it to work. But yeah, it's a serious. This marks it's been the beginning. bad. It's been yeah. bad. It's really bad here too. Oh, I can't. Yeah. yeah, see, for me, my allergies they last for at least about a good six weeks. So this this is really just day one. So I you know, I got a long way to go, unfortunately. Yeah. And also yeah. that. That actress who I think he was thinking about was uh, Jennifer Jason Lee was uh, that character uh, and and Ange- An- An- like what was it, Angelina and, like she was supposed to be like playing Sydney in uh, like uh, the Stab Three movie but uh, before when, when it was but when the movie got canceled like Sydney came with the real Sydney came across her was in possession of a ghost face mask and a phone and it's basically think was she is she the killer all this time like mm-hmm. I mean she was mm-hmm. supposed to be in the original script yeah I'm guessing what that's that's what it's referencing. But uh, she said, oh, uh, yeah, oh, since the movie's not going to work out, I'm just taking these as uh, souvenirs. And I'm like, oh, OK. I mean, that's, there is a term for that in, uh, the fil- in the filmmaking business. You know, taking souvenirs from a set uh, without permission. Uh, what is that term? Oh, yeah. Stealing. Yeah. <laughs> Superhero horror shows. Oh, the only super- there's only like a handful of superhero horror, like uh, Brightburn. That's one of the more modern examples mm-hmm. of it. Yes. I, yeah, the evil I'm- Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really what that is. If Superman yeah. turned evil, Brightburn. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he did have all the powers of Superman, so. Yeah. And even had kryptonite. Ooh. <laughs> what about what about Venom? Because, I mean, yeah, he's funny, but he he kind of is supposed to be like the, the evil side oh, that wants yeah. to do all the bad things. <laughs> yeah. The, the, like, the evil half of Spider-Man. Yeah. Yes. Was it I mean, the black Spider Man? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, man, Venom, he could be easily be a horror villain. <laughs> I mean, even in, because I've been playing Spider Man 2 on the live stream, you know, and uh, I'm at the part where we're uh, encountering Venom, and he's this, he's like the most destructive Venom I've ever seen in fiction. Mm-hmm. Because he's like try, taking over New York City by spreading symbiotes that possess, to possess other people. I mean, just that alone is horror film quality right there. Yeah. That's a characteristic. I mean, and but I do, and also he's voiced by he's voiced by Tony Todd in the game. Oh, really? Ooh. Yes, Tony Todd, the perfect. I showed you that, Nick. Remember? Oh, that's right. That's right. See, I get sorry. My my mind's been going all different directions. Had a oh, lot yeah. going on. Tony Todd, who has, who has the perfect voice for Venom. So yeah, really that does. was that was excellent casting. Yes. Oh man. So yeah. What what else was I gonna say? Um. 
Oh, Candyman right. himself. That's right, Chris. Yes, Candyman himself. Correct. Yes. And yeah, like it, when they were first introduced like uh, Sydney into this film, like she was like starting to like live off the grid, like under a fake name, and like, he's working for like a women's crisis counseling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which uh, which I gotta say like that. Not not a bad choice. Like after she everything she's been through, wanted to put her experience, yeah, you know, use it for for good. But uh, I can't imagine it'd be easy, like living off the grid under fa- under a fake name. I mean, eventually, Ghost from Ghostface was able to track her down, and like uh, and then uh, you know, smoke her out with that call. And I just cannot get over like how did she? How did Ghostface get a hold of her mother's voice? Yeah, it's kind of strange. That, that see again, that goes back to the. Whole situation with all these different voice changes. Yeah, it's like Sydney's mother's been dead for a while, and this, and he somehow has her voice. I think it's just that during the time when she was there in in the Hollywood, in Hollywood, she must have samples or something of her voice. Samples that had that I doubt had aged well after over twenty years. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Like in film, like because she was auditioning and being in Hollywood, and they didn't know that part about her before. Yeah, but but in order to like, but say that that stuff was left to kept in storage for long periods of time, right? But mm-hmm. uh, and he was only recently able to get a cop- a sample of that because he's working in the film studio. But uh, it, but it's not that not, but it's no guarantee that it, like because film deteriorates over time. Like uh, after like uh, twenty something years, it's. Do you think he just like stocked, you know, like stocked so well that he was, you know, wanting to know his mother, so he might have like seen her, watched her before she passed, you know. Well, she did collect, like uh, collect video of uh, uh, of like him well, of her like having like uh, affairs with other men, including Billy's yeah. uh, father. Leading, so he might have just like super stalked her, and it didn't really show that part. Uh, that's that. That'd be my guess. I mean, that's the only possibility I can come up with. <laughs> but to a sample of the voice is somehow able to get it to, I don't know. Yeah, you, you could just like mim- use it to help mimic that that same voice with the device. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't get like how technology built like that when back then. I don't. Yeah, I just it seems unusual for its time, but it obviously existed. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like how do you do that with just one little device? <laughs> that just yeah. sounded, that just seemed unlikely to me. I think it's like recording. He recorded it somehow mm-hmm. yeah. and, and played samples of it. Oh man, but uh, yeah, like. Like, like I said, there were like so many deaths in this film that I could, that I felt like could have easily been avo- been avoided. Like the guy who blew himself up, he could have just like, left the house with the rest of them instead of <laughs> remaining inside. Yeah, that character Tom. Mm-hmm. I wish Tom, I wish Tom Nally uh, had joined us because so, then I could just tell him, "Sorry, Tom, you didn't survive this movie." <laughs> well, he turned himself into a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> no? Well, you guys are playing with you guys are. Was shooting those little balls all over the field, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh man! I was wondering, did you lose something, <laughs> man? But uh, yeah, then I just like uh, like uh, Jane McCarthy is like her character when like how she was killed off. She was like trying to run and hide, and like there was a whole bunch of ghost face uh, costumes like that. There were because you know it's the movie set like where they're filming a movie about ghost face. Mm-hmm. So she's surrounded by them, and Ghostface is like hiding amongst them. I'm just like, oh, he's pulling that old trick. <laughs> oh, yes, Tom. Yeah, he disappeared right into the upside down. That's right. He hasn't, he hasn't, yeah. been, he's still finding his way back. We've yet to see him. Oh, here. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, Charles was here before Irene showed up. So, yeah, oh, that's right. why he's saying hello again. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, yeah, Charles was saying he that he hopes you're doing well, Irene. I am. Yes. Oh, I'm just busy trying to make stuff getting separate to shipped out. Ah, I see. Do my work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. But I gotta say that finale from the film, like where uh, Sydney and and uh, and no, uh, like Roman are finally facing off one another, taking place inside of Milton's uh, private screening room, where the whole where all of this mess began. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But I thought that was uh, pretty fitting, and I look at that private screening room, like uh, hidden behind a book a bookshelf, and I'm just like, man, why don't I have one of those? <laughs> yeah, a secret room with a passage yeah. through the was, book yes. bookshelf. 
I when you pop the books and then me yeah. it opens up <laughs> yeah yeah nick <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah I, w- I would love to do that with just like one of these like uh probably um i don't know one of my godzilla movies just do this and then the whole this whole thing shifts aside <laughs> and i got a, I got a big theater <laughs> and i got a nice big theater back there got it don't forget you got a popcorn maker you got kernels there you got <laughs> yes i would yes i would have that too and you saw well, that, like, yeah. he had he had all these like secret passages. Like, what about that one with all the mirrors? And oh then, yeah, the one that uh, the, the hallway, act- the one that uh, fa- that actress uh, for Gail was uh, hi- yeah. was, was I mean not trying not not hiding behind was uh, trying to get Dewey and Gail's attention, but ended up uh, not being so lucky. No, he already stabbed her by then. Yeah. <laughs> And he, she was even saying things like, 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 stop, I'm not afraid of you. I'm like, uh, clearly you are. You're like running away from him instead of like facing him. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're already running out the door. <laughs> you're the one who's, you're the one who's running away from him. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> and Bye. <laughs> yeah. And also, do we just use like, and like using up all his bullets? Like, like, because here's the thing. Like that extra, she was, she was like a uh, banging on the, uh, there were like a row of mirrors, right? Of like mm-hmm. two way of those mirrors where you could see in one direction but not in the other way around. Um, she was banging on the far end of it, but Billy, went, but then, but then Dewey was like shooting on the other side of them instead of in the direction like to shatter. Then finally shatter that mirror after she had died. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like he could just shot that one that was next to the one she was banging on. Mm-hmm. He could it just took him forever out. to get to her. Yeah, he could just. <laughs> It's like I would have done it differently if I were in his shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's the thing about horror, horror movies. Yeah, sometimes not. It's not always you know good decision making that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I have thinking. a question. Oh yes. On, on the part where um, uh, I guess Sydney comes and to the mansion, and he has her like wand herself to make sure she doesn't have any metal on her. Or right. guns, and then she throws the gun into the pool. And then when she's in the room, she has another gun. Yeah. So she was smart enough to avoid not not scanning that the, her oh, her okay. leg. Yeah. So she yeah. hit another one. Yeah, but she went. Yeah, she hit another one. She wanted to. She purposely scanned like a, a left, took a second gun, like like for the purpose of scanning to make to make him think that that was his own, her only weapon. Mm. Okay, because I was I like, wait, did she just throw the gun in the pool? No, no, it, was a, no it was a separate gun. Okay. Yeah, she wasn't expecting it. He wasn't expecting her to have a leg holster carrying a second gun. You know, it's like, oh, she's really ready. Oh yes, <laughs> and and brought Where a bulletproof go? vest. Right. And she brought, and she oh. brought a bulletproof vest for uh, because she knew she would, would end up needing it. So mm. <laughs> that was super smart. Yes, <laughs> totally. Not only that, but I'm pretty sure bulletproof vests. I mean, the Kevlar that could also deflect uh, like knife attacks, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, because I know, not, and, I know, I yeah, because I know police units. They they have a, like, I mean, I mean, the Kevlar vests are more improved now than they were back then. But uh, yeah, I would like, I would think if they could stop bullets, if they could stop bullets, they had to have been able to stop knives, right? If he ended up trying, yeah. trying to stab her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. <clears throat> so either That's way, why, even on that scene where um, Dewey kept shooting at him to kill him, and he had all these shots, but it wasn't fatal because he also had a vest. So they're like, shoot him in the head. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I would have realized sooner that that was the case. Like, uh, like if you shot him twice, it has no effect on him. Don't you think maybe he has a bulletproof vest on? I mean, it's like, come on, you used to be a cop. Surely you know that bulletproof vests are a thing. <laughs> yeah, he didn't yeah. think of it, and then so that's why they thought, you know, super super human powers. But no, it's just the vest. Oh, a pointed objects can go through them. Oh, so hmm. out of the way, they get waved. Whoa, excuse me. Hmm. But at least maybe not fatal. May, may, maybe. I mean, as long as it avoids certain uh, arteries and certain uh, like um, like and, like vital areas, then yeah, it's not fatal. Like mm-hmm. sir, like we have like arteries all around us, even our neck, which has the uh, the car- the carotid artery, which uh, mm-hmm. is prob- is responsible for pumping blood from the heart into the brain, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's that's one of the most uh, fatal injuries, if uh, if that had been stabbed. Most cops are taught two bodies, one head. 
Oh, just it's shoot on zombie land. Right. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Most cops are shot to shoot twice in the body, once in the head. If, uh, yeah. if, if like twice in the body, they assume that there's a bull guy's wearing a bulletproof vest. So they go for the head. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. I've seen a lot of cop shows where they do that. Yep. Or on zombie land, it's double tap. Double tap. <laughs> double tap. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oh, man. Yeah, like, I, it's like, I love the original Zombie Land, but Zombie Land 2 is worth seeing as well. I've been listening to that that song that Woody Harrelson like that um cover of Burning Love that he did at the end of the at the end of the, that's just and normally I'm not much of a country fan but that's actually pretty good. Yeah. So Woody Harrelson's got some music talent. Yeah, he does. He really does. But yeah, I I like I like both Zombie Land films equally. I think they're a lot of fun. Yeah, pretty much how I like both uh Deadpool movies equally. Both of them are as great as the other. Can't wait for the new one. Yeah, well, 2029, and we'll hopefully see Zombie Land 3 then because they have been talking about like wanting to do this every 10 years. Mm. Hmm. I I could I would have a feeling that's what was going on. Well, and even people will say, well, well, like somebody like they know the rest of the crew would still be alive, but would someone like Woody Harrelson still be alive? Because you know, he's obviously oh, yeah. the oldest out of the group. But you know, he's kind of like what Joe says all the time that he's a vampire. Woody Harrelson says. I'll never die anytime soon. I'm still going to be here for that. So I got a feel. So I got a good feeling that he's probably going to still be alive by 2029. Uh, well, look at Bill Murray. I mean, he's still doing Bill Murray, yeah. Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too bad he he didn't couldn't stay alive in uh, Zombie Land. Mm-hmm. But, oh yeah. <laughs> but I, but I thought that was. I thought that was. I thought that was kind of dumb on his part, you know, trying to play a practical joke on, uh, or try to play a prank on uh, Columbus by dressing up as a zombie. I'm like, um, you're in a zombie apocalypse. He shoots zombies on sight. Going in there dressed up as a zombie. Guess what he's gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was still pretty funny though. I still remember even saying to myself, "Oh my god, he shot Bill Murray." <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's true. But uh, there was one uh, cast member that I. Forgot, forgot to mention on here. Uh, who is it? Oh, Patrick Warburton. Yeah, he played that uh, bodyguard, uh, Stone. Patrick War- Warburton. Oh yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. that ill-fated one who ended up uh, apparently like he like he, his character said that he was a bodyguard who protected uh, Julia Roberts and also let's see, he's I think he said uh, Posh Spice. I'm guessing that's one yeah. of the spice, one of the yeah, Spice yeah. Girls. Yeah, that's oh, how. Really? Yeah, that's, that's, that's seriously. Yeah, that, that's how you. Yeah, well, his character says he protected that and I, as a bodyguard. Yes, but uh, that's crazy. Yeah, that, that's how you know this is like a uh, 2000 or early 90s when he's the, when there's Spice Girls mentioned. Yeah, mm. well, that was late 90s. <laughs> well, late 90s, but this is year 2000. Yeah, that is it said early 90s. I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that's when their popularity was was spiked back then. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Whatever happened to that group? They they broke up. Mm-hmm. There hasn't been like any reunions or anything like that. Oh, there have been. Mm-hmm. There, there, I mean, there have been. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've seen mm-hmm. on, on the news. They did mention a few times on the news. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah, I do watch a bunch of uh, music shows where they uh, do talk about this stuff. Hmm. But um, yeah, like he kind of asked him was it, that character was asking to get killed, like when he was like making that comment about. Um, about Dewey's uh, sister, like, like saying, he's like, I want to make sure uh, this thing doesn't butcher you like it did with your sister. I'm like, that was a low blow. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, the killer was like, and he was, he thought he was saying this to Dewey, but it turns out it was the killer, like, using the device to mimic Dewey's voice, saying, I can't believe you said that. That makes me. Then the ghost face comes up behind and says, angry. And then, <laughs> just, and then just gets him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, please kidding <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, yeah. and, oh wait this is your 2000 so this would be a year after family guy started where he started voicing joe yeah mm-hmm. hey sure. peter <laughs> <laughs> and tom's better at it though that say it than i can i can't do that voice at all <laughs> yeah, if, see again another reason why we don't we don't have pickled tom on he'd do the voice <laughs> oh wait uh there was that that character, uh, Mindy. What was her name? Uh, Martha Meeks, Randy's uh, sister. Uh, I believe she did reprise her role in Scream uh, Five and in Scream Five. I think. I think she did. Let me let me scroll. Yep, she did. I was just I was going back uh, to IMDb to double check that. Wait a minute. 
Last name Matarazzo. Is she related to... Wait, hang on. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought she was... I was still checking to make sure to see if she was related to Gaten Matarazzo, who plays uh, Dustin in Stranger Things. Mm. Yeah, but, when you uh, said that last name, I'm like, hmm. I was, I was <laughs> <gonna say. laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I was just like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Matarazzo. I'm like, wait, is he is she related to him? <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, like some people like have last names that are similar. Like uh there was that one actor from uh what was it? Uh, Predator 2 whose last name was Baldwin. Turns out he's not related to the Baldwin brothers. I was gonna say mm. I don't think he's related to the Baldwin brothers. Nope. Yeah. That's another movie we got to cover is like a pre the Predator movies, but I also want to cover Aliens, the Alien movies first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Or actually, no, wait, wait. Thought of something. We cover an Alien movie and then a Predator movie. Mm. And, like, and then like, Alien like, like, versus like Predator like, later. Like switch well, back funny and forth. Funny enough, Dodd, if you don't mind me telling, we're possibly going to go see Alien in next yes. week. Because if you guys didn't know, they're having a special screening of the original Alien for the 45th anniversary. Right. Uh, they're having it on uh, April 26th. We don't know exactly. Uh, I'm still waiting, Don. I don't know exactly which theaters yet. I'm still watching for it. But mm, we're going to go see it on Friday. And that's yep. also going to be Don's birthday gift because I'm paying for it. Nice. Oh. It, yep, <laughs> seeing my all-time favorite horror film in theaters. Awesome. Yes. Really, and I've, and I've since I've gone to a few of these, you know, re-screenings of classic movies, Trust me, Don. You will feel like you're back in 1979, even though we were never born. Then you're gonna feel like you're in 79 for for a little while. <laughs> yes, I mean it's like sure I can watch Alien anytime I want, you know. But yeah, but seeing it in theaters now that would be a great yeah. experience. The big screen, yeah, and yes. especially when it's all like, um, uh, what, what's what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, when it's all like lights restored. off. You're, you're like it, it, it's rescored, you know, like you're in that atmosphere, you know, that dark atmosphere mm -hmm. that that film is known for. Yeah, yeah. And it, it feels like it's brand new when you see it. Yes, like oh, it yeah. would be it would be pretty much released the exact same ways as as it was originally released back in the late seventies. Right. And I, my parents uh, remember that movie being in theaters. Like they didn't see it in theaters; they walked past a theater that was playing it. So one of the one of those uh, one one of the one of the theater rooms that was playing it, mm -hmm. and I think it. I don't think it was no, it wasn't AMC. No, no, it wasn't that. But uh yeah, they walked past them, they actually heard audiences screaming. My mom, she went to go see it. She saw it in theaters back in 79. Nice. That that was probably I in fact, I think that was uh probably the only time she ever saw a horror film in theaters. Uh, yeah, this is back when my parents were in college and they were dating. So uh -huh. yeah, nineteen seventy nine. Yeah. I think that I think that might have been their senior year. That was just two years after my dad graduated high school. Oh. And my mom, I believe, then was studying in law school then. Oh, I see. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they bet they never expected their uh, unborn son to uh, have that being one of his all-time favorite movies. Geez, I was 15 that time. Oh, wow. I see. Yeah, man, 45 years ago, it feels like it's been it's obviously a completely different era from what we have today. Man. It really is. It really because not to mention, of course. I mean, let's be honest. Obviously, they didn't use CGI, and just the the design for the Xenomorph is certainly some of the best designs that have been put together. Yep. Yeah. So much good things about that film. I'm trying to. I was hoping to save that for like the 100th uh, Fear Fans podcast, mm -hmm. but I might be pressured into doing it sooner because you got. Yeah, you got this this coming out. You got something a new alien movie, Alien Romulus. Yeah. Yeah. So we got that. And but I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, Scream Three. I mean, it is technically I mean, yeah, it's not as great as the first one, but uh it still had a few things going for. It. I mean, I do like how it uh has that whole message about uh trilogies, how it like uh really they like, paid homage like, like satire to all to all like everything we know about trilogies like how it introduces new things like as randy mentioned uh like in return of the uh, like in return of the jedi like that released a secret too mm. yeah 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 seriously thinking back to that movie it's like where you find out that leia is uh luke's uh, sister and then mm. she says 
I, I, I know somehow all along I knew. And I'm like, really? Well, that makes the kiss that you shared with him in the last movie very creepy then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Chris said he watched Ghost Story. That was his first horror movie back in 1981. Wow. Mm. <laughs> nice. Uh, I remember my, my first horror film. Yep. Five years old. Yeah. Mine's Texas Chainsaw, and then I fell in love with horror <laughs> at five. That's, that's, <laughs> oh, oh, really? Were you nice? Yeah. Um, that's that's how I was. That's how I was what back then. Yeah. What, what was uh, what was your first uh, horror film, Nick? My first one would probably have to be. Well, I know it's not necessarily horror, but obviously it has horror elements to it. But it's. Either, nonetheless, it's what introduced me to the horror genre. That's undoubtedly Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> well, it does have horror aspects to it. That's I mean, why hey, it has horror yeah. elements to it. I mean, it's not necessarily a full horror film, but it does have the elements of it. Mm -hmm. I, I guess you got to say that was pretty much the one film that showed me truance, that showed fear, if you will. And that's what I really enjoyed about it. And that's what kind of landed me to where I am today. Yes. Yeah, Joe's put very much put me on the path where I am today. <laughs> yeah. I had Fred yeah. Astaire, Astaire in it uh, in Ghost Ghost Story. Fred Astaire. Hmm. Huh? What, what does that name sound familiar? It huh? is familiar. I, I'm trying to think, where have I heard that name before? Fred Astaire. Oh, he was in Tower. I don't know Fred Astaire. I, I, oh, wait. He, he was a dancer back in yeah. the 30s. Oh, here. Yeah. Singing oh. in the rain. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm seeing it now. Okay, let's he see. was also in, uh, well, funny enough, since Easter was two weeks ago, he was in the film Easter Parade with Judy Garland. Mm -hmm. And he, mm -hmm. yeah, he was quite a big, but he was more quite of the dancer back in his days. Mm -hmm. You know, he, there was a, he was just known for his, con he even was an inspiration for Michael Jackson, as a matter oh. of fact. Yeah. So, let's see. Chris, you mentioned, nice. uh, you mentioned that he, you saw him in uh, Ghost Story. I believe Ghost Story was the last film that he starred in before his death in 1987. That's correct. Yeah, he was 88 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Man. Yeah, he was in a lot of different movies, uh, mainly back in the 30s and 40s, like Top Hat, Swing Time, Shall We Dance, um, Holiday Inn, Easter Parade, Bandwagon, Funny Face, and Silk Stockings. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah. he's, act he's part of the list of uh, classic Hollywood cinema in 100 years, 100 stars. And for him, he made it to number five. Yeah. He was the fifth greatest male star of classic Hollywood cinema. Right. That's true. Oh, uh, Nick, we, we did mention, uh, I don't know if you were here for this. We did mention uh, Patrick uh, Dempsey. Like, uh, so it's been pretty crazy like seeing him in this, knowing he plays a big horror villain in uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's right. It's crazy to think that, you know, 20, almost 25 years later, he'd, basically be his own killer if you will pretty much like it makes you think he's the killer in screen three like near the end but i'm like no don't worry don't worry guy nev campbell he's not the killer in this just wait uh almost 25 years from now <laughs> he's mcdreamy yes he is Grey's anatomy we mentioned that before earlier yes and Tra oh yeah that's right transformers yes i remember that yeah Grey's anatomy. Charles was 20 charles was 24 oh uh oh i think we lost irene oh, oh. You know what? I think, you know what? I saw her screen went black. I think her battery might have died. Oh, that's why I was keeping mine on the charger. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Nope. She's back. Here, here, she, here she is. We uh, thought your battery we got, died. We've yeah. got a couple minutes. Yeah, we got it. Let's see. What was her name? Oh, Derek Shepard. That was his name in uh, Grey's Anatomy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like my family watched, uh, they've, they've watched that show a little bit in the past. So, yeah, I'm familiar with uh, some of his work. Yeah. But, Do you uh, remember. Uh, Telephone program called Night Stalker. Night Stalker. Night Stalker. I've heard of. Yeah, mm -hmm. I might have. It was about a reporter who goes out in the middle of the night. He sees all these uh, accidents. Oh, oh. yeah, or and crimes. Some of them were zombies, and some of them were really creepy things that happened at the night. Hmm. It mm -hmm. it was one oh, of my favorite. Know, I remember this. You know, I just looked it up. I just I know exactly what the show is. Um, mm -hmm. Don, this show, in fact, airs on MeTV. This was a show that aired 
back in the mid seventies. Uh, it didn't yep. last for very long, but uh, it only lasted from from nineteen seventy four to nineteen seventy five. Uh, oh. Darren McGavin, he investigates yeah. serious crimes with unlikely causes, those mm-hmm. involving the supernatural or science fiction, including fantastic creatures. And the really yeah. cool part about the show is that it often does take place here in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it does, but not always necessarily. Sometimes it'll take place in other cities. It's yeah. in fact kind of Chris Carter cited Kolchak as a tremendous influence in creating his franchise, The X-Files. So it kind of yeah. actually mm-hmm. was the inspiration okay. for Almost like as if you would want to kind of put it as like a combination of kind of like the Twilight Zone and the X-Files of the 70s. I can see it that. It was one of my favorite shows. I always it was good to watch it at nighttime. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good. It's really it's really good. It's not. <laughs> I'm glad Meet TV has been re- re-airing it. Although, unfortunately, at the time they do air it, it's usually late. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and, but it is that kind of show, though, where it's that classic TV show you definitely want to watch if it's yeah. like you know ten or eleven o'clock at night and yeah. there's really nothing else on to watch. That's interesting. X Files for me. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. um, it's a good show. I think you'd like it, Don. It was it was actually more. I don't know. It went through. It got to the creep factor more than the X Files. The X Files mm-hmm. was really yeah. um, it you know yeah. Whatever you know, you can take it or leave it with the Xbox. But that one, it showed really creepy, creepy things happening. It was more yeah. scary than the X Files. Yeah, yeah oh, more supernatural. Yes, I love the, the Xbox. Yeah, there. we've we've covered that one on the podcast <laughs> before. Love it. Yeah, I mean, there were there were there were a few times like where <clears throat> some. I mean, typical of such shows from that era. There were times sometimes they added you know some pieces of humor in it, but mm-hmm. a lot of times it, it did get pretty creepy. As I would put it. The first beginning of it acts almost like a crime show, but then yeah. the rest of it becomes more kind of horror science fiction related. And then when they got into this one part that I liked was the zombie that they had to put salt in the guy's mouth and he, he had to yeah. show the mouth up. That was really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I think you'd like the show, Don. Like I said, it's on me TV. I'll so check I it out. It, I think it airs. I think it, matter of fact, I think it airs right after Sven Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, here, guys. It's uh, time we got to wrap this up. So, uh, okay. yeah, Scream Three. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, lots of people they consider it to be one of the weaker films of the series, but uh, I mean, but I have seen worse sequels than this, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. it, it did have it, it has its so weaknesses, but it also does have its strengths. But uh, uh, that yeah. show made me laugh all the time. I used to laugh my guts and, out watching Scream movies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like so. Yeah, but be sure to tune in uh, next week when we cover something that uh, some of you have been uh, wanting us to uh, cover for a while, and it's Paranormal Activity. Ooh, yeah, that yes. I love that one. I yes. think we're all, you're going to have a good majority of the Paranormal show hosts for that one, Don. I mean, they're like a dirty shirt. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I just want to throw out real quick, too. I mean, just the announcements, you know, for my show. I'll be back on with part three. <laughs> Hopefully this is the last part I have to do on the super outbreak, but we're going to be back with Nick Files tomorrow afternoon, although we are going to start a half hour early because I ended up starting. We ended up going two hours, and I unfortunately overwent. I mean, uh, I ended up cross-streaming with another show by accident, so we're not going to make that mistake tomorrow. So we're going to start at 4 o'clock my time instead. Okay. And uh, super na- Oh, and, uh, to the grave and back. I'm not sh- – oh, wait, to the grave and back. And this is actually something – I don't know if you guys saw the message that Lois said. You guys are welcome to join this one, too, if you'd like. Okay. Lois is going to do a special episode of To the Grave and Back about mm. serial killings that inspired horror films. Oh, like so, like, ooh, like Ed Gein. Like Ed Gein, yeah, okay. like very much like that. So all three of you guys are welcome to join if you'd like, if you got time for it. It's going to be at uh, around 3, 3 o'clock. Oh. 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh, well, it's 3 p.m. over here. Uh, uh, oh, geez, I keep forgetting your the time difference. So, yeah. But um, yeah, we're gonna be doing it, and then also Thursday, uh, with Supernatural Talk will be our 100th episode. We officially Yay. made it. Nice. So exciting. I don't know right. what to expect, but it should be a lot of fun. 
And uh, for Frighteners, I'm not – I think we might have another guest coming on for, for Friday, but I got to check with Lois. And then, oh, and also one final uh, announcement. This is, has nothing to do with the shows. Um, Jill and Irene, I know you guys already know about this because I remember you guys reacted to the picture. I also just want to give a shout-out for a – a good friend of mine, another investigator in our family by the name of Mary Lynn Moore, tragically mm. passed away three days ago, which was unexpected. Um, I only ever had the opportunity of meeting her once at Silicon, but we did stay in contact, you know, like on Facebook every now and then. Yeah. But it wasn't, I didn't find out until last night. She, unfortunately, mm. she wasn't even that old. She was only 60 years old. So... Um, <laughs> so definitely, so you're really not saying anything great about it because that's how old I am. Oh, jeez, sorry, I mean, out, Nick. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but no, I mean, what with, is wrong all, with you, Nick? But with all due serious, uh, serious though, I mean, um, definitely my heart goes out to her family, so you know, we're, we're definitely gonna miss her, yeah, hmm. yep. Oh, Chris. Yes, hey, appreciate, really appreciate you watching, Chris. Thanks. And uh, so, like I said, next week, paranormal activity. Can't wait. Okay. And, uh, yes. And so. <laughs> what, Chris? <laughs> All right. Anyway, see you on the next stream, Don. Yes. Uh, th thank you. So, yeah, next stream I'm going to be doing on my channel is going to be uh, Thursday when, at uh, 7 p.m. when I'm going to be playing some more Spider-Man 2. Can't wait to continue on with that game. Yeah, fighting a villain played by, played by Tony Todd. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kitty. yeah. Yes. Vo voice by uh yeah, so fighting another villain voiced by Tony Todd. And uh so yeah, I can't wait for that. So yeah, be sure to tune in at seven PM at central time on uh, Thursday for that live stream. So hope you hope you guys uh, enjoyed this edition of the Fear Fans Podcast. And until next time <laughs> the cat oh, has the last word as Chris says. <laughs> And bye. Until next, until next time, stay off your phone. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. Love that.